So this angle in the middle here, just like it would be for a polygon, it's called a central angle. And here's what you need to know about central angles. We're going to look at how central angles and their arcs, their corresponding arcs, are related to each other. So in this particular diagram, we know that the central angle here is 110 degrees. And we are going to try and figure out how big the arc is that goes along with it. So that we're, the arc that we're looking at is going from A to C. There's only two letters here for AC, so that means it's going to be a minor arc. It's going to be the short way around the circle. And the key thing for you to know is that the central angle and its corresponding arc are the exact same size. So this arc from A to C here is 110 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to do some practice problems where we're going to try and identify how big some angles and arcs are based on this picture. So one thing for you to note here is that we've got a regular pentagon. So A, B, C, D, E is a regular pentagon. If you think about that, then angle E, F, A that we're looking at here is going to be a central angle. And we know that for central angles, we're going to do 360. And then for this one, we'll divide by 5 since we've got a pentagon. So we're going to get 72 degrees for that. So not only is angle EFA 72 degrees, but really all of the, the angles at the central angles, there are all 72 as well. So next, let's see if we can figure out how big angle BFD D is. So if you think about where BFD is, here's B, here's F, here's D. And so we go from um, B to F to D. We're going to combine these two angles together. So that's going to give us 144. The next one that we're going to try to figure out is an, is an arc, so A, C, D. So we're going to be starting at A, going the shortest way we can to C, and then ending at D. We're going to try to figure out how big that big arc is around the outside. So the key idea here is that all of those central angles and their arcs are the same size. So they're all 72 degrees. So we're going to combine these 72s together and we end up with 216. Okay, next on the list is a new vocabulary term. So this is another angle, but you can see this time A is not at the center of the, the circle. Instead, it's on the edge of the circle. So when that angle is on the edge of a circle, it's called an inscribed angle. There's a different relationship between inscribed angles and their arcs, and we're going to look at that now. So we've got an angle here, an inscribed angle here, that is um, angle BAC. We're going to try to figure out how big the corresponding arc is for that. So if we're talking about angle BAC, the corresponding arc there is BC, and the relationship between an inscribed angle and its arc are that you have to double the angle to get the arc. So if I double 30, I get 60. Okay, so now we're going to see if we can figure out how big angle DAC is. So I'm going to go ahead and connect DAC together. You can see that I also added in here how big the arc from D to C is, which is 110. So if we work backwards, instead of doubling the 110, we're actually going to divide it by 2 this time. So if I do 110 and I divide by 2, I get that 55 degrees. So inscribed angles are always smaller than the arc. The next one we're going to look at is arc AD. So we're going to try to figure out how big arc AD is. Now you'll note up here it says that AC is a diameter of the circle. So if you think about um, going halfway around a circle, halfway around a circle is going to be 180 degrees. So looking at going from A to C here is going to be 180. So that means that this arc all the way around is also going to be 180 total. So if I do 180 minus 110, I'm going to get that arc that's left, which is 70. Okay, next on the list is arc AB. So we're going to use sort of similar thinking for this. 
we know that AC is a diameter of the circle, so halfway around the circle is going to be 180. If we already know that this arc over here is 60, we got to figure out what's left to get a, to 180, and that would be 120.